Hello and welcome to the chapter on string manipulation. This is the part 2 of this particular chapter and in this part we are going to discuss about operators in strings. So let us begin with our part. So the first topic that we are going to discuss here is operators. So let us try to understand what are operators. To define it we can say that operators are symbols that trigger some computation when applied to variables constants and other objects. So what are operators? They are some symbols. Symbols like plus, minus, multiplication, division, greater than, less than, etc. Now when we apply these symbols, like let, for example let us take plus, if I apply this plus to some objects like 5 and 6, it will give us a result as 11. So these are some symbols that trigger some computation when we apply it to certain variables or constants or certain other Python objects. Now let us see what are the different types of operators. The different types of operators are as follows. The first type of operator is the concatenation operator. It is denoted by plus. Plus is used for two purposes. One is concatenation and other is for addition. Here since we are discussing the operator plus with respect to strings, here it is known as concatenation operator. The meaning of the word concatenation is joining. We will discuss this operator in details in a few minutes from now. The second type of operator in string is the replication operator. It is denoted by the multiplication symbol. But the operation that will be triggered after applying replication operator is different here. Next we have the membership operator, comparison and comparison operators. So let us begin with the first type of operator in string that is the concatenation operator. So what do we mean by concatenation? Concatenation refers to joining strings. If there are more than one string and then we need to join those two strings, then it is known as concatenation. It is denoted by the plus symbol. This operator creates a new string by joining the two operand strings. So what it does, it joins the two strings and it will give you a new string as the result. What is the syntax or the rule for applying the concatenation operator? The rule is that there are two strings and we need to add the two strings. That means we need to put two the two strings within quotes and it must be divided by the plus or the concatenation operator. So let us see an example related to that. If I write computer plus science, then it will give me the result as computer science. What it will do? It will simply join the two strings. This operator that is plus works in situation where both operands are numbers or strings. Now how does the plus operator work? If we give the both uh, operands as numbers, it will fetch me the result as 12 if I do 10 plus 2. Again, combining numbers and strings with plus operator results in error. For example, let us see the case here. Here we have race plus 3. Race is a string and 3 is a number and this is prohibited in Python. If we try to do like this, it will result in an error as we can see in our screen here. Before going to the next type of operator, let me just give you a description, a brief practical demonstration of the concatenation operator. Let's say I'll write some string, let's say Python plus, let's say is fun. Both of these are strings and if I give the plus operator or the concatenation operator in between and press, press the enter key, it will give me the result as Python is fun. If I like take one as a string and the other as a number, it is not supported in that way. So it will result in an error. So let us go to the next type of operator in string that is the replication operator. Now let us try to understand the meaning of the word replication. Replication refers to displaying a string for a given number of times. So if we want to repeat a string for n number of times, we will use the replication operator in strings. It is denoted by the multiplication operator. 
This operator returns a new string by replicating a string for n number of times. Let us see the syntax related to replication and then we will be clear with what is meant by the latest line. So the syntax says that string into n. That means whatever we put within quotes, it is to be repeated n number of times. For example, here n refers to the number of times a string is to be replicated. If I want to repeat a string for 3 times, the value of n should be 3. If I want to repeat it for 5 times, the value of n should be 5. For example, if I write python into 3, what it will do? It will replicate the string python 3 times, like it will show as python, python, python. Let's see a note here. This operator works in situations where both operands are numbers or one string and the other a positive integer. So if both the operands are numbers, for example, 3 into 2, it will give me a result as string. Or if one is string, uh, string, let's say Python, and the other is a positive integer like 3, as we are seeing in the latest example here, it will give me the uh, string replicated by the number which you write over here. A word of caution should be kept in mind here, which is, using it with both operands of the string type generates an error. If we try to give the both the operands as strings, then it will result in an error. For example, python into python, it will give me a error that it cannot multiply sequence by non-integer of type string. So before going to the next one, let me just give you a brief demonstration of the replication operator. For example, if I give python, into 3, let's say I'll give here 5. The syntax is string multiplied by n. Here n is the number of times that it should be replicated. So python into 5 means python will be repeated 5 times. If I give both as strings, then it will result in an error. So you should take care that one should be a string and the other should be a positive integer. Let's move on to the next type of operators, which is the category of membership operators. Let us try to understand what membership operators are. These are a set of operators that are used to check whether a character or a group of characters is contained in a string or not. It will be clear when we give some examples. Now there are two types of membership operators. First is in, second is not in. Let's see both these type of operators one by one. And then if you come back to this definition, you will understand what membership operator is. So the first membership operator that is in says that this operator returns true if a character or a substring is contained in a given string, comma, false otherwise. So if I put in Python j in Abhijit, here I use the membership operator in. So what it will do, it will find the character j in the string Abhijit. Now can you find it here? Yes, j is there in the string Abhijit. So it will return the result as true. If I write jit in Abhijit, is the substring JIT contained together in the string Abhijit? Yes, the substring JIT is contained together in the string Abhijit. So it will result in the result as true. If I write BI in Abhijit, is BI contained together in the string Abhijit? They are not contained together. See, B is here and I is here. They are contained in the string Abhijit but not together. If they are not contained together, then it will result in false. So if that particular substring is contained in the given string, then it will return true, false otherwise. I think now you have got an idea about membership operators. Now if I take you back to membership operators, I think you will understand it. These are a set of operators that are used to check whether a character or a group of characters is contained in a string or not. They basically check whether a substring is contained in a string or not. So we have already seen the 
in membership operator let us go to the next membership operator that is not in this operator returns true if a character or a substring is not contained in a given string false otherwise so if something is not if a substring is not contained in a given string then it will return true false otherwise for example if i write p not in abhijit yes the substring p is not contained in abhijit that means this is a true fact so it will return the result as true if i write ji not in abhijit but ji is there in the string abhijit therefore it will return false if i write bi not in abhijit then you can see that bi is not in the string abhijit together therefore it will return true okay let me just give you a brief demo over here if i write i in python i is not contained in the string python right therefore it will return the result as false if i write yt in python yt is contained in the string python right therefore it will return the result as true if i write yt not in python here i have used the membership operator not in so if the string is contained it will return false here the string is contained therefore the result will be false if it is not contained let's say i not in python then since i is not contained in the string python therefore it will return the result as true i hope this is clear let's move on to the next type of operator that is the comparison operators what are comparison operators these are the relational operators the relational operators are used in python for string comparison i think you remember what relational operators are we studied about this in the chapter on data handling so these are basically used for comparison these are used for comparing numbers also and like strings also tuples also lists also etc so here since we are talking about string these are supported in strings also and here they are known by the name of comparison operators now relational operators as we already know it includes greater than less than greater than equals to less than equals to equals to not equals to etc this symbol is called not equals to this is known as equals to comparison is done character by character based on their ascii values this part is very important now how the comparison will be done in case of strings in case of numbers we can easily say that some number is greater than the other but how will the comparison be done in case of strings in case of strings the comparison is done one character at a time by using the ascii values ascii is an encoding standard and it stands for american standard code for information interchange now what it is basically for each character in the keyboard there is a definite code associated with it which is a universal standard code and that code is known as ascii code now let me take you through the uh, extended ascii characters we have a total of 256 uh, characters here and here our main point of discussion now is the alphabets so if i uh, like take you through the alphabets only now capital a has an ascii value of 65 and capital z has an ascii value of 90 so this is the range of the capital alphabets if i talk about the small characters ascii values they range from 97 to 122 now we should note one thing here that the priority or the values of small letter alphabets or the lower case characters are greater as compared to the upper case characters see upper case characters it begins from 65 till 90 but lower case characters the value begins from 97 to 122 so we should remember the fact that the ascii values of lower case characters are greater as compared to the upper case characters now let us see some examples related to that if i write raj greater than raj both these strings seem similar right 
but if I compare them, they are not similar. Here we have capital R, here we have small r. But whose ASCII value is greater? The ASCII value of capital R will be, will be smaller and small r will be greater. When we went through this topic on comparison, I said that comparison will be done character by character. So at first only the first characters are compared. That means capital R will be compared with small r. Now is capital R greater than small r? No, it's not. Therefore, it will result in false. If I write Raj less than Rahul. Now at first capital R will be compared with capital R. But since these two are equal, we have not yet reached as a, at a conclusion. Now, if we do not reach at a conclusion, only then the second character will be compared. Now small a will be compared with the small a. Still we are not reaching at any con conclusion. Therefore, the third character will be compared. That means this j will be compared with h. Now we need to see which will have a higher ASCII value. j will have a higher ASCII value or h will have a higher ASCII value. j will have a higher ASCII value as compared to h because if we count a, b, c, d, e, f, z, h, h comes before j. So obviously h will have a lower ASCII value as compared to j. But here it is said the opposite thing is said therefore it is false. If I write Raj equals to equals to Raj here also uppercase and lowercase are different. So different ASCII values as we compare the first character therefore it will result in false. You can try all these things. So if I write Elise not equals to Ankita now first character is compared we did not reach to any conclusion therefore the second character is compared capital L is not equals to n yes capital l and small n are not equal therefore it will result in true all right now let us see how to find the ascii value of a particular character if i know a particular character and i want to see what is the ascii value of that character we use a function called ord function or the ordinal function the ord function is used in order to find the ASCII value of a character. For example, if I write ORDA, the ASCII value is shown as 997. And from the chart, we already know that the ASCII value of lowercase a is 97. If I write ORD, capital C, now capital A is how much? 65. Capital B should be 66, capital C should be 67. So as I press the enter key, I'm getting the result as 67. Now, if I know the uh, L, uh, value and I want to find out the character associated with that ASCII value, I can use the CHR function. So the CHR function is such a function that is used to find the character corresponding to a ASCII value. For example, CHR 65 will result in capital A. CHR 103 will result in G. We can go back to the ASCII chart and like match it whether it is giving us the correct result or not. With this, we come to the end of this particular part. I hope that this session was useful. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next part.